Hello everyone, I'm Lalit Singh. Welcome back. So now that we have seen how exactly we can control the user inputs by clicking the buttons or by interacting with edit text, now we are going to see more about the user interaction component or user interactive components. Now, before I introduce you to the today's topic, I'm going to share my last weekend experience with you guys. I went to this nice restaurant and as soon as I, you know, I, I sat there, there was this waiter coming up with the menu. He showed me the menu and, and I ordered the food. The reason that waiter showed me that menu is so that, first thing, it would be easy for me to pick my food item. And the second reason for that is the time. The, uh, let's say the waiter has to recite all the menus for me. At that point of time, it would be very confusing for me to decide what I really want. Second is the categorization. Because each and every category of food was categorized so well, I didn't have to look uh, to the other categories because I wanted Thai, so I just went to the Thai menu. So in the same way, menus can be used in Android. We have already seen that how exactly we can make our user interaction better by using the UX, by using a better UX, and by putting the edit text uh, at their right places, button uh, at their right places, and putting the uh, correct image button if an uh, image button is required. So in the same way, menus are also a part of user interaction, which provides you a good UX, that is a user experience. Now, you can perform all the action which a menu does by providing the different buttons also. But we are here all about providing a better user experience to our users. So, in this particular uh, topic, we are going to cover how exactly we can design our option menu into our action bar, what are contextual menu, and what are pop-up menus. So, first of all, let's just talk about how many types of menus are there. There are basically four types of menus. So, there are basically four types of menu. First, option menu. Second, contextual menu. Third, contextual action bar menu. And fourth is your pop-up menu. Let's just discuss about each one of them in brief. When we talk about option menu, option menu is associated with an activity. Each activity has one option menu at the top. Well, uh, you can, uh, and each activity can only have one option menu. So option menu is one per activity. Now, you can have option menu onto your action bar also. What is action bar? Action bar is that bar which you see at the top of your uh, application where you can see the title of your application also, right? So you can have a title of your application there also. You can have a navigation uh, button, uh, navigational drawer button also. And we can also have our option menu directly put on our action bar also. Now, you only want to put the option menu directly on your action bar only when, only and only when, you think that that option menu is going to be used by the user very often. For example, in your social app, uh, or let's just talk about WhatsApp, there is a search button uh, and on your action bar. That button is nothing but an option menu which have been placed on your action bar. Now, every time you want to search any, um, any user you want to uh, chat with, you will just click on your search button and it gives you the option to search your person or, uh, or your user. So that's what a uh, option menu when you place it on your action bar. But then again, you will see that at the very right, there will be three uh, dotted buttons. Now, what, are the, what, what exactly is that button? That button is known as overflow button. Now, if there are menus which user is not interacting oftenly, but user can interact uh, in the later, uh, in the later uh, stages while he's using, his, uh, using that application, you can put those menus there. For example, settings. Now, settings is something user is uh, user might want to access if he wants to change the setting, but not oftenly. So you can put those kind of menus in your overflow button. So here we can see that, uh, here we can take a closer look at the option menus, that any menu which you want to put on the action bar uh, or uh, or the menus which a user will be interacting very oftenly, you will you can directly put them on the action bar. And if you want to put in the overflow button, that's how the overflow menus look like. In the overflow button, whatever the title of that menu you give, that title will be appearing on that overflow button when you click on it. And it appears on the right corner of your app bar or action bar. And user can always interact with uh, those menu items and 
navigate to a different screen or do any functionality what, she, um, what he wants uh, when a menu is being clicked. How do we add the option menu? Well, to add an option menu, the very first thing which you need is, you need to create a folder into your resource or rest folder, that is menu folder. And inside that menu folder, you need to create a XML file known as menu underscore main XML or name it any um, XML file, my menu.xml. And inside that XML file, you will create your menu. We will see how exactly we can create our menu in a bit. Next, what we need to do is, we need to connect this menu XML file, which you have just created, to your Java file or to your activity file. Now, in, how do we connect these XML file, uh, how do we connect this menu XML file to your activity file? Inside the activity, there is a callback method known as on create option menu. You just have to inflate this XML file, menu XML file, uh, uh, inside your on create option menu method. Once you inflate the mm, menu XML file, you will be uh, you will be able to see your menu inside. Uh, you will be able to see your option menu. But the only thing is, you will be only able to see the menu. You won't be able to interact with it. Now, to provide the functionality to your option menu, you need to override another method known as on option item selected. Now, once you override this method here you will uh, here you can distinguish between the different menu items and you can handle them so here you will be handling them with the help of uh, with the help of a switch case because there can be more than one menu item and you will provide the functionality according to the uh, menu you are clicking as if uh, clicking at any point of time now let's see how exactly we can create a menu inside your menu uh, dot xml file well there will be at the top, there will be a menu tag. And inside that menu tag, there will be items tag. Now, these item tag will create your option menu. Now, when I'm creating an item tag, uh, or a menu item, the very first thing which I need to take here, or in which I need to put is the ID of that menu item, so that I can handle it whenever I want to handle it in my activity. Second, I need to put the title. Now, title is, uh, is something what I want my menu or the what what is the title I want for my menu item? It can be settings, it can be um, it can be a uh, status, it can be uh, it can be any title uh, you want your menu or your option menu uh, to be showing. Next, if you want uh, to inflate that same menu file into your option menu now, all you gotta do is. There is a method known as get menu inflator. Now, this get menu inflator gives you or provides you with the functionality that so that you can actually inflate a XML file, which is which is there inside your rest folder. You can inflate, you can get that XML file into your Java file. So, what exactly menu inflator or inflator classes are again? Inflator classes or inflator uh, objects because this get menu inflator is giving you a inflator menu inflator object only. So the inflator classes are the classes which can which are perfectly capable of inflating the XML files from your rest folder to your Java folder. And here you can see get menu inflator. Then we have a method name inflate. Inside that inflate, I'm providing which menu file actually I want to inflate. And as I have already uh, provided that menu file inside my rest folder, so there will be an entry inside the r.java file. So r. Dot, as it is in min, uh, as it is inside menu, so r. Dot menu. Dot menu underscore main, and then provide the uh, menu object, and always return true so that uh, you can see the option menu at the top. Now you can always provide icons to your menu items also. Now. To provide the icon, first you need to include the icons. Now, how exactly you, where exactly you will be including the icons? You can include the icons inside your drawable folder. When you are including the icons, uh, either you can copy an image of a correct icon size, or you can always create a new image asset and choose action bar and tab items um, category, and automatically that image will be resized uh, to an icon size, and then. Uh, press next or finish. 
then you can include that icon inside your menu item uh, tag where all you have to do is Android icon and give the access to that icon. If you want to show your menu item directly to your action bar or app bar, for that purpose, you need to use app, uh, you need to use an attribute known as app show as action. And in that, there are uh, options if room, always, never, many more. Well, when we talk, when we put always, it will always put that menu item inside my action bar with the icon whatever the uh, with the icon whatever you have included at that uh, menu item if you put if room if there is a room uh, to put the icon onto the action bar then only it will put if you put never it will never put uh, that menu item onto the action bar it will always put inside that overflow button now this will create only uh, up until now we have only created the option menu but to handle that option menu we need to override a method name known as on option item selected until unless we do not override this method we can't really handle our uh, option menu so to handle it we need to put this method now how exactly i'm going to distinguish between how exactly i'm going to distinguish between different menu items because at any point of time uh, i can click uh, any menu item so for that purpose we will use switch or if else um, oh, I like switch better so we'll use switch switch and then uh, this option on option item selected gives me a parameter of uh, menu item so we will use that item uh, object and get the ID of all the menu items because at any point of time I will be clicking only one menu item then I will start making my cases r.id.action order there must be order uh, order menu item or r.id.settings and in each one of those cases now I can put the functionality what I want to do for that particular menu item or what I want to do for next particular menu item and in the return you can put true that was option menu now let's just discuss about contextual menu when we talk about contextual menu Contextual menu are not associated with the activity, but they are directly associated with the views. What do I mean by that? Well, simple. When I say view, it can be associated with the edit text, it can be associated with the text view, or it can be associated with the buttons also. So, or it can be associated with the list view, re, uh, recycler view, or um, or any view group or any collection of views also. There are basically two types of contextual menu. First is floating context menu another one is contextual action mode now floating context uh, in in both the cases contextual menu are triggered when you long click on the views so floating contextual menu you must have come came across a lot let's say you are uh, long clicking on a edit text it gives you a contextual menu like copy paste or you are long clicking on a list view it gives you the options like insert delete or delete chat right so uh, and it uh, it uh, it shows you right on your screen itself it's it's like floating over the screen and you can still see your activity behind that uh, behind that menu so that's what a con uh, floating context menu is what about contextual action mode well contextual action mode uh, comes when uh, when you are again when you are pressing long click on any uh, one of the views but it actually hides the action bar uh, or app bar temporarily and uh, instead of floating uh, instead of showing a floating context menu uh, instead, of, instead of showing the menus as floating um, uh, floating way the menus are shown at the top of the action bar we'll discuss about contextual action mode more when we reach to it let's just see how exactly we can create the floating context menu first now again to create a floating context menu the very first thing we need is a menu file that is uh, we need to create we need to go to the rest folder we need to create a menu.xml file and we need to put the menus which I want when I uh, open my contextual menu and then what I need is I need the views with which view I need to attach this contextual menu now there, there might be uh, one view or there might be more than one view you want to attach uh, uh, different contextual menu files so let's just talk uh, let's just say we have edit text right now or text view which we want to attach this menu with so your contextual your floating contextual menu will not work until unless you do not register your view with the context menu 
So for so to do that, you need to uh, use a method name register for context menu, and inside that you need to pass the object of the view whichever you want to register. Once you do that, next you need to override a method known as on create context menu. Now, inside this on create context menu, you will inflate your menu file which you have created in your menu folder inside the rest folder. And this will give you the access or this will show you the context menu whenever you are uh, going to long click on your view now or whenever you are going to long click on your edit text now. But this will only do uh, this will only show you the menu. But to handle this context menu, you have to override a method known as on context item selector. Now inside this on context item selected, you can again uh, uh, you can again distinguish between different menu items by using the switch and you can put the cases and you can uh, again handle them differently. There is one more thing which I want to discuss here in context item selected is, let's say you have more than one views uh, um, uh, attached with your context menu. Then at that point of time, you will be having more uh, menu XML file uh, inside your menu folder. And at that point of time, you will be having more views also attached with your context menu. Let's just see how exactly we can create the context menu now. Again, you will go ahead in the XML file and uh, put this in item. And inside the item, you will put the ID and title and order in category in which order you want to place your menu. And if you want more uh, menu items to be shown, you will put uh, that too. Next, you need to register a view with your particular uh, with your particular uh, context menu. Let's say you want to apply this context menu to a text view. So we have a register for context menu and uh, you provide the um, text view object in it and it will get registered. After that, you need to override a method known as on create context menu and inside that you can always inflate your um, menu uh, XML file by using get menu inflator dot inflate r dot menu dot whatever the menu name you gave and pass the context menu object and it will show you the context menu. But to handle it, you need to override your context item selected and then um, you can distinguish between different items and uh, handle them according to the cases you have built for them. So that was floating context menu. Now let's just talk about contextual action bar. Action mode is when you are letting go of your normal UI interaction uh, temporarily. So uh, it will it will generally happen when you are long clicking on a text view or when you are long clicking on an edit tag uh, and it will show a menu at the top of the action bar instead of showing a floating context menu. Now to enable your con uh, to enable your action mode, there will be a method name start action mode uh, that you have to uh, that you have to put. Once you once you do that, your menu will be triggered. Now to handle that uh, action mode, you need to put the callback methods. What are those callback methods? On create action mode, on prepare action mode, or on action item click, or on destroy action mode. Well, in on create action mode, you will start creating your menu. On prepare, you will, uh, 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 on prepare action mode will be called every time you, uh, you make some changes or invalidate uh, your menu. And on action item click, uh, um, on action item click, whenever you click on your menu, what needs to happen, how you handle it. That's what you will be doing here. And on destroy, once uh, once you are done with it, once you are done with your, um, once you are done with your particular menu item or clicking your menu item, you want to go back to your previous activity UI. So that's when you will be destroying your action mode. So you can see uh, that's how your context menu look like. You, you you long click on a text view or you long click on a, uh, you select a whole bunch of text and at the top you can see that there will be a share button, there will be edit button, there will be back button. So uh, this whole thing will be enabled by your contextual action mode uh, menu only. Uh, this whole thing will be enabled by your conte contextual action bar menu only. So there will be a XML file, uh, that is menu XML file with this, and you will be attaching that menu XML file to your action bar. And whenever you are long clicking on any view now, it will trigger uh, your context menu 
uh, inside inside that you will put a method name start action mode and once you do that you have to uh, call all the callbacks method and you will handle your menu in the callbacks method the very first uh, as you can see and for any view you will put a set on long click listener and inside that you will uh, put the uh, handler on long and inside that you will call the menu by calling on uh, by calling start action mode and then you will call the callback method for uh, action mode uh, then you will call the callback method for action mode and what are those callback method the very first will be on create action mode and inside this you will be inflating your menu from your again rest folder inside the menu and inflate it here and return true and then you will be preparing uh, and then the next callback method is on prepare action mode and in this method will be called every time there is a change in action mode or invalidate if you want to handle those action mode, uh, if you want to handle those menu item, that's the method you have to uh, implement or override on action item selected. Again, you will uh, put your cases of different menu items. Uh, and uh, um, again, you will put the cases for your different menu IDs. And then you will uh, provide the functionality to handle those menu items. If you are done with your um, context um, action mode, then you have to uh, in the on destroy tell that okay I'm done now uh, action uh, now my action mode object can be null and it will return back to your normal UI uh, interaction mode. Next pop up menu. Now what is pop up menu? Pop up menu are actually anchored to a view only, uh, but they they will be formed and they will be appearing in a form of list. Yeah, if I have to give you an example for that, you must have seen your Gmail accounts or emails, there is this reply button. And when you click on that reply button, automatically uh, there are uh, there are other menus, reply, reply to all, forward. So that's what a pop-up menu is. You click on one of the views. It can be a button. It can be any image button. It can be any image. It can be a button. It can be text views. And you click on it and a list appears uh, right below that. Uh, that's what a pop-up menu looks like. Now let's see how to create this pop-up menu again you will be creating a menu inside your menu folder XML file and then you will be creating a image button uh, or a button or any view inside your layout file and then you will attach uh, and on the click of that particular view button or uh, image button you will be uh, calling your pop-up menu inside the handler of that uh, image button or or the view itself and you will be calling the pop-up menu inside it. And uh, once you uh, once you call the pop-up menu object, you will be inflating the menu file from your rest folder or from your menu folder inside the rest folder into your uh, into your pop-up menu. And once you do that, after that you can again, uh, uh, if you want to handle your pop-up menu, you need to again override a method known as on menu item click listener. And uh, inside on menu item click listener, there will be a handler on menu item click. And in, in this way, you will be able to handle your pop-up menu also by providing the particular IDs. Let's just see. Let's say we have a button, uh, image button, and we will be putting this image button in our main layout. And um, I will be providing all the attributes, necessary attributes like source image uh, and ID for this button and all. And coming back to my uh, main activity, I will get the image button access by find view ID and then I will set the on click listener to it. And inside that there will be on click hand, uh, there will be on click method, which uh, inside which I will be providing the code to open up my pop-up menu. First I need to create the pop-up menu object. Next I need to inflate the pop-up menu by again calling pop-up, uh, again by calling pop-up menu object dot get menu inflator and inflate the menu which you have inside your uh, menu folder inside the rest folder and then if you want to handle that pop-up menu you will be using set on menu item click listener and uh, inside that you can handle your pop-up menu by providing again switch to uh, switch to each menu IDs and making the cases for each menu ID and provide the different functionalities there and that's how you handle your pop-up menu if you want to learn more about adding app bar uh, playing with themes and styles and menus and menu resources, you can follow the following links. Next, we are going to see the practical for our menus. <laughs>